Thanks again for rejoining me on the program TMI Monday. We get the discussion segment on the way right now, right away, as we look at the challenge of development plans, national development plans, and of course, the issue as it relates to designing the appropriate strategy for Nigeria's development. Um, I can't recall uh, the current development plan that is operational in Nigeria. But I know that uh, years gone by, we did have some development plans. And to what extent were these development plans executed for the economic recovery of our dear country? Uh, to what extent were these development plans executed to meet the key template set in those development plans? Uh, apart from the Vision 2020, which of course was very, very popular, Back in the days, uh, I don't think there's any other meaningful development plan in place that will take us to where we ought to be. And then there is a consequence, which is that uh, he who fails to plan is definitely planning to, to fail. fail. Uh, is that the case in Nigeria? These and more will be asking our panelists here on the program TMI Monday. From my extreme uh, left, let me thank very specially Fred Uyigwe. Fred Uyigwe is a former governorship candidate in Edo State, a politician. He's also a development economist. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you, Mr. Duke, and good morning to you. We have also joining us Paul Izedowa. He's a public affairs commentator based in Benin City. Paul, many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you, Dr. It's happy New Year to We also have with us on set Christopher Ojekere is a program officer with Foundation for Good Governance and Social Change, also a public affairs commentator. Chris, many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you, and Happy New Year, viewers. We also have with us an erudite scholar, a specialist in business administration. is a professor of business administration with Novena University. I'd like to thank very specially Professor Tony Ijewari. Prof, many thanks for joining us on the program. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, let me start in the order in which I did my introduction, beginning with uh, Fred Uyigwe. Uh, what is a development plan? Let's start off from that as a foundation for this conversation. Uh, a development plan is a program of uh, is a program of activities <laughs> to be undertaken during a period of time to be able to accomplish a vision or a mission. OK. OK, that, that's, that's quite apt. Um, you share in this definition, Paul? Yes, to a very large extent. Okay. Uh, it has to go with uh, the, growth, the growth plan. There. And before you have a development plan, you must have a specific goals that you intend to achieve, mm. either as a state or a nation. So it, it has to do with the plan, like what you said initially, when you're doing your introduction, who will face to plan, plans to fail. Mm. So there's need for us as a nation, even as a state, to plan in order to meet up with the setting goal. When government comes into power, it comes with different policies. Okay. So this developmental plan is to set outline uh, roles and responsibility duties to be able to attain the specific goal. Okay. So uh, to a very large extent, developmental plan is very important for the development of our country and our nation in general. Okay, uh, Chris, why is the issue of development plan very thorny in Nigeria? The reason is simple. First of all, the planners, what was the objective when they set out to plan? After the objective, what measures of monetary and evaluation have they put in place? What feedback mechanisms do they have when and after they have set out the plan? What is the political will for execute, execution of those plans and implementation of those plans? How has the structure and system in place already in Nigeria affected the plans? To what implication is federal character to what implication is cronyism? To what implication is political powers that have the winner takes it all attitude? All of these affect 
the development plan that we have had in Nigeria. Before the democratic dispensation, even the military had so-called development plan. Right from Obasanjo, we had development plans in names. We had needs at a point. We had OFN, we had this, and we have that. All of these were affected either by military coups. You had SAP and uh, uh, from uh, Babangida. All of these were affected by the military coup. And during the uh, political dispensation, by elections, by political party attitude, or that is members of political party, or the government in power's attitude, and all of that. So all of these issues do not suggest that the plans were plans for Nigeria. They seem to be agenda for particular groups. And so when those groups phase out, for one reason or another, the plan phases out with them. If the plan is for Nigeria, then the plan is going to continue after either administrations or continue after. So the plans, that's why I said, what's the objective of the plan? Is it a development plan for Nigeria, a development plan for a political party, or for just to have a plan? So that's, that's the reason we have the problems that we have. All right, so let yes. me bring Prof in. Prof, yes. um, in recent times, the most current development plan would be Vision 20. Mm. 2020. Mm. And I know that on the 20th of January 2020, um, the cycle of that plan would have elapsed yes. and then we'll probably start taking stocks. But I was a little bit taken aback that when this plan came out, key templates were set and then there were efforts to popularize them, make them acceptable, make them the benchmark for people to plan and do all kinds of things. But somewhere along the line, the mobilization, the um, opera, maybe not opera now, but the level of the tempo of uh, uh, talking about it that we saw initially fizzled out. I'm sure that within the last uh, one year leading to this year, <laughs> we, mm. we, didn't, we didn't used to hear people talk mm. about Vision 20, 2020. Mm. What, what, are, what are your thoughts on, on this uh, development plan, as it were? Yeah, I, I want to just permit me to go a little bit back okay. to look at the development plan uh, issue. Okay. Now, when you are talking about uh, plans, we have what you call long-range plans and short-range plans. Mm. Now, plans are based on what you call national priority. And when we say national priority, uh, that is to say, what is the exigencies? What is the needs of the people within that period of uh, budgeting? And we should not forget that budgeting has a lot to do with plans, because any plan you have is based on, is, 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 is radiates, you know, from the policy you are put in place to be able to address certain national issues as it concerns the citizens of a country. Now, uh, in, 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 in the case of Nigeria, you, you, you will observe that the, the plan they have does not flow with the needs of the people, you know? And uh, we, we, what, what are we talking about? We are talking about, for example, employment. We are talking about you know, uh, you know uh, the industries, you, 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 you try to do everything to energize the industries by providing what? The enabling environment. Here we are talking about infrastructure, okay? okay? Then we are, we, are, we are also looking at transportation. How does it affect the, the movement of goods and services? How does it affect, you know, uh, you know uh, the, the, the industries? Then you talk about power. Uh, how, how does it uh, influence, you know, uh, uh, deve uh, uh, development as far as the industries are concerned? Mm -hmm. then, then, then you talk about the health of the people, you know, uh, because a sound health, a sound man is likely to be a productive, a productive man. Then, then you look at education. Uh, is education uh, policy right? You know, because when uh, the human capital is developed, you know, they tend to, this shows in what? In productivity. You know, so at the end of the day, you put all these variables together, you know, to, 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 uh, together. Then they form the basis of your national plan. 
you know, that we address issues, you know. But where you are completely, uh, uh, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are just completely blind, you, the whole thing is blink. It, it's, it's like somebody swimming in, in the dark, you know, no, no direction, no mission, no vision, you know. And, and, and where you have a such situation, you have what you call economic chaos. And that is where, that is what Nigeria is presently going through because there, there's no articulated development plans put in place based on what? The variables. Those variables I've just mentioned because, because they are the ones that drives the, the, drives the economy. You know, small scale industry, medium scale industry, what plans do you have for them? Most of these developed, uh, uh, developed nations, if you look at Japan, China, economy, and the rest, the, 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 their base was that uh, they, they took off from small scale industries. Are we addressing that? You know, are we addressing? We are not addressing that. Are, are loans available to address most of these issues? So, so, so the point I'm making is that development plan must be based on the needs of the people, which is articulated based on the policy that has been put in place. But we are not seeing that happening right now. All right, uh, Fred, <coughs> let, let, let me come to you. Uh, let's let's uh, we'll try as much as possible to zero in on vision. 2020 2020 well of course you have the right to expand and maybe bring all other uh, development plans into it um, this is one very strong strategic plan long-term plan i think for about yes. uh, 10 10 years or so yes. that was initiated by government but somewhere along the line we just lost track but um they say nigeria is a is a, is a paradox of some sort in the sense that without uh, seeming application or execution of these de development plans, the country has recorded some feats. For example, becoming the largest uh, economy in Africa in recent times. 2013 so, 14. Yes. So, so, what, what do you make of that? Not now. What do you make of that? <coughs> First, let me say this. Yes. Let us all, we, I believe we all agree that Nigeria is a country with great potential given the amount of blessings, when you think of the factors necessary for development, Nigeria is abundantly blessed with it. We have a huge population. That huge population potents a huge market. But it's not a potent market. It's not a dynamic market because it's not a demand market because the people are relatively poor compared to uh, nations of the same size with the same uh, resources. So, that having been said, uh, the problem here is that, like you have rightly mentioned, we seem to lose focus. Right from when I was young, since I first uh, brushed uh, studies on economics, I've always heard of 10-year development plans in this country. The only one I believe was, uh, was potent was back in the 70s. But from then, we've just been hearing 10-year uh, development plans, 10-year development plans, and at the end of each 10 years, nothing comes of it. Even the late legend, uh, Anikula Borasamkuti, Fela, Fela Rasamkuti, with it. 1990 uh, plan, 1980 plan, 1990, 2000, 2010, and now we are talking of 2020. 2020 presupposes that by 2020 we'll be among the 20th, uh, 20th uh, Universalized nations. most developed nations in the world, and with the 20th uh, largest economy in the world, and all of that. We'll be among the G20, call it that, if you will. <clears throat> that is all wishful thinking. Like the professor has said, you have to be able to articulate your vision plans, the strategies you want to use to accomplish this. And key, and perhaps the most important, and that which we neglect, is human capital development. Yes. It is the humans who are, who create the opportunities, who create the vision, who solve the problems when there are challenges in the system, is the humans. And they can only solve problems to the extent that they are exposed, 
they are educated and they are trained. If you have not invested in the exposure, the education and training of your population, then you are going to receive mediocre results. Absolutely. So that is why it is key, very important. What has benefited us, especially in Edo and Delta, is that we had a period when we had a dynamic leader in this place, in the person of uh, uh, Dr. Obemudia, Samuel Obemudia. During that period, we experienced great development because we were exposed to it, because we saw it. We still have a yardstick by which we measure development. Okay. And so, that exposure has enabled us, especially those now who travel now, to go out there and excel and be able to remit money back here, which made us here the highest uh, uh, foreign exchange income earners from private sector in the nation because our people were educated. But that way, after that administration back in 1975, it is now that we are even seeing a semblance of uh, leadership, a leadership that has that appreciation. Professor Ali did did well. Yes, he had that he had that appreciation. That is why he also emulated what Obafemi Awolowo had done in the West okay. by making sure that everybody was educated. The more people who are educated in a society, the more developed the society gets. Like I love to say, a society can only develop as much as the best graduates or the best products of its best institutions. Mm. So that human capital development is it's key. It's key. Then we must begin to actually give, uh, we must begin to give place mm. for specialization. Okay. Those who are specialized in, in those who are specialized in uh, certain fields should be given the opportunity to work within the fields in which they have specialized. The most relevant, I will say, the most relevant academic program for administering any economy or any business is business studies. But very often, we find that the people who are employed, who are engaged, in administration and management of organizations around the country, public and private, have little or no formal knowledge of administration. The best universities, the best, uh, the best administration univers administrative universities in the world, Harvard, uh, College of Business, uh, Cambridge, uh, Oxford, uh, Princeton, and uh, Yale, Stanford, they all have elite business colleges from which the biggest companies in the world draw and look to to recruit managers. We do not do that. Mm. We just place anybody in any position and say, oh, anybody can manage a business. That is not true. Okay, let me, let me pause it there. Let me pause it there. Um, yeah, is it the way? What, let's, let's look at some of the factors that have been adduced for the seeming lack of performance of our national development plans. Um, we, we talked about uh, incapacities of those given responsibilities to deliver. Exactly. The, we, we talk about um, human uh, capital. The, the human capital deficiency. Uh, you talk about the political will. In your opinion, how would you score Vision 20, 2020, using these templates. Okay, thank you very much. I, I want to, first of all, let's get some certain facts clear. Mm. Uh, I, the, the prof alluded to the fact of some variables that we need to, to push in the development plan. Mm. And uh, my brother, Ariel Frederick, who also talked about uh, uh, so many things regarding the development plan of Nigeria. Uh, in, in such a way that sometimes we don't even see some of these things put in, into effect. First of all, the, the Vision 2020 was, wasn't uh, 
didn't come in this administration. But let me set the ball clear. Let me set the fact clear. It, it may not be very true. It cannot be very true that we don't have a development plan. Like Paul said, we have a short-term plan. We have a long-term plan. And we have a medium-term plan. Mm. Uh, we remember that when this present administration came into being, because I will just specify it, narrow it down to this present administration. Mm. Uh, after some time, the economy went into a recession as a result of uh, about four to five uh, strength in the GDP growth. So what, what happened? We needed to restore back the economy and we needed to make sure that we invest in people and all that. So what happened? The government came up with a plan. We can go online and search it. And it, it came up with economic recovery growth plan, which was called the ERGP. So this economic development growth plan was a template set for this uh, current administration to make sure that so many things, uh, those variables like the health sector, the education, the investing in human capital, which is investing in people and restoring back the economy, making Nigeria a competitive economy in the global world. So the question is, how effective are, are the plan? Are, are we brought it into reality? Yeah. These are things that we need to look at. Now, we talk about restoring growth. Remember that after this plan was set, yeah. about after some time, Nigeria growth started coming up and international body like IMF World Bank came up with a report that Nigeria has uh, recovered from the recession. We're not back to about 2.1 GDP growth, which was not even enough as a result of uh, our population explosion. Okay. Uh, if you ask the economists, they will tell you that we need to be growing at 4, point, 4 to 5 point uh, uh, growth, GDP growth. Okay, now the question is, look at restoring, they have restored, look at restoring back the, the economy, uh, the growth, they look at investing in people. Now this government came in with a very large uh, uh, investing in people's program, which is called the Social Investment Program, the mm. SIP. Mm. Under the SIP program, we have the, the school feeding, which of course they are there in the media, the school feeding program, the Empower Initiative, mm. Currently in the new state, we have about 14,000 to 15,000 empower that are, work, that are, that are give, being given stipends okay. to work in our various, uh, uh, either as NTH, NAGRO, or NPUD, and so on and so forth. So we are not there yet. It's not over yet for yeah. Nigeria. But yeah. the point of question is we are moving, uh, we, may, we, are, we, may, we may not be very far, but we are moving gradually. But the problem we have had, because if you look at the challenges we are talking about generally here, they were as a result of uh, the failures in the previous uh, government mm. did not trying to implement uh, those plans. We have the structural adjustment program, I-30 was implemented. We have the NIST program that my brother talked about. Yeah. So the question is, if you look at, um, look at this current administration, for mm. instance, mm -hmm. they set out plan, they, have, they set out goals for themselves, that they have uh, security, they have investing in people, they are trying to, they are currently, we are with the end power program and is about 500,000 in the federation. It is a very minute figure, but then it's heading towards somewhere. And the sustainability is, where the, is what the government is currently looking at okay. now. So it, we, we cannot definitely say to the, to the general public that there is no plan. There are plans, but gradually they are being implemented. Right. Looking at what mm -hmm. the president said mm -hmm. in our in news, in in near, near message, yeah. We have about 40, 45 road project that will be that will be implemented yes, executed this yes, year. Yes. You, you look at it talks about so these things can be can be can be questionable, they can be they can be evaluated. So we, we, we please with all due respect, we should not just yank or just tell the government that probably they have not done okay. okay. right, it. I'll come to you. That's That's but I, okay. I needed to get uh, Chris in, involved here. Yeah, Chris, yes. um are we confusing um uh party manifesto exactly. with development plan National or development. individual plans because uh, i've heard in certain fora that in nigeria right now what is operational is even your individual plan supplanting the party manifesto exactly. and it looks like that in turn has supplanted yes. the national development exactly. plan. i want to get your perspective exactly. all right um prof i think prof tried to give us that perspective there is the long-term national development plan. Mm. What's the duration? Like, well, as he said, can be four chose, years. He chose the duration. Okay. 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 But usually, in advanced economy, you can have up to a hundred years plan. Mm. You can have fifty years plan. You can have thirty years plan. Now, there's the long-term national development plan. That is a bit different from something like the economic recovery. Exactly. Which is a reaction. 
the economic recovery and growth now was the reaction. Yes. Now, the long term development plan, you set out to plan it. You have certain objectives. Yes. They are national plans. Mm. They are not plans for parties. Mm -mm. They are not plans for individuals. They are national plans. And then you set templates and targets. You have monitoring and evaluation uh, mechanism. So you are able to tell where your country is going. It's a national drive, national policy. It's a national vision. Now, that is what I understand as development plan, irrespective of whether it's long-term, short-term, or medium-term. Now, party manifestos are plans of a particular political party, which, expectedly, should be within that long-term national plan. Mm. And that is also how the electorate should judge party manifestos. Whether your party manifesto is within that long-term development plan, or you have something completely different, which is counter to the national vision of where we want to take the country to. So there's a bit of confusion in all of this. Now, these temporary measures and reactions, which eventually pop up, uh, pop, uh, pop up during administrations, is, for me, the real problem that we have. We don't have structured planning. So we have a problem of minimum wage. Workers are saying our salaries are not enough. And then all of a sudden, the government sits down with the workers and increases the salaries. Now, just the next month, the government is about increasing VAT, uh, uh, VAT and tariffs on electricity. <laughs> are you following? So you would have thought that the government increased salaries because they wanted to ameliorate the condition of workers. Now, how does that ameliorate the condition of workers if you give them with your right hand and you're taking it with your left hand? Mm. But if there's a structured planning, you'll be able to tell whether within your policy you want to increase salary yeah. and keep that at the pockets of the workers. What other thing are you going to do for the next year to be able to take care of your electricity problem without having to bore hole in the salaries you have increased again? So these are the things that there are confusions here. And then you have this, uh, what, what you referred to, what you made, and do you know there are times you just find the, the president went abroad and unilaterally, you know, mm. declared mm. that Nigeria the was country. a visa free country mm. for African nations. It was not discussed in the National Assembly. You know? No. It was not discussed in the uh, uh, Federal Executive Council meeting. He went on a trip and before he came back, he assigned Nigeria as a visa free nation. And we're trying to pursue that plan and implement it. These are the issues. So we don't have structured plan. What we just have is knee-jerk reactions or individual whims and caprices, you know, reactions to, to issues. The ROGP, you know, with all due respect, is probably the brainchild of Vice President uh, uh, Shibanjo. Are you following me? And then uh, all of a sudden, oh, Shibanjo, we woke up uh, one morning and we were told the Shibanjo is no longer, in fact, none of those programs is under the office of the Vice President right now. <coughs> We, are, we suddenly have a ministry yeah. that is to take care of all of that. Yes. I should think that administration should have sat down at the beginning. What are our plans? What are our development plans in the, in the next four years? And after the four years, if we are to continue for the next eight years, and then who are to handle what? As he said, yeah. about professional, you know, uh, professionalism to different. So I think there's a lot of confusion. All right, Prof, you, you're eating to say something. Yes. Uh, in addition, in addition, okay. Um, I, I wanted to. Um, I wanted you to also give us your thoughts on some of the uh, challenges bedeviling the implementation of development plans in Nigeria. Uh, would anybody be correct to say that these deficiencies have been heightened under this present administration? Well, you see, uh, before you start saying that um, there are signs that the economy is, is picking up and things appear to be taking shape, Let's look at some of the indices, economic indices. You know, uh, where the, the President of the World Bank recently said, by 30, uh, 2030, that Nigeria will be the, the, the poorest country in the world. And, and he warned the government that from what he's seeing, that the economy is growing at 2.1%, that that is very, very poor. And we should not uh, also forget that um, uh, 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 Transparency International also said that we are now uh, occupying the number one position of corruption and even poverty, we are also occupying the first position. You see, when you, when you say you want to develop economically, you have to look at some of those, uh, what we call economic leakages 
And corruption is one of the biggest economic uh, leakages. E.g., the National Assembly complex was built with 7 billion naira. And it wants to be renovated with what? 37, 37 billion. billion naira. What the hell are we talking about? But what I was then, I mean, the, 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 Prof, I mean, the, the, you're talking about no, then. Yes. What was the exchange rate it, at it, that time? It, it doesn't matter, my brother. It matter. No. When, the, when we are a monolithic the, economy. Okay, if, even if you come to uh, exchange rate. Yes. Even if you come, to, before the last administration left, what was the exchange rate? No, that's it's, not, that's it's not one the question. Prof, it's one to 27. It's one to At the time the National Assembly was built, what was the exchange rate? Yes. What National is it today? Assembly yes. Enjoys, yes. Enjoys a huge annual yes. budget yes. allocation. Yes. Exactly. For, for, for yes. 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 Those budgets are allocations. Yes. They are not to yes. build the National no, Assembly. No, no, they are no, for no, salary no, allowances no, and what have you. Yes. They are on first line, line charge. Yes. On first line, line charge. Yes. It used to be 150 billion. Yes. 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 New proposal of 7 billion. Yes. It's outrageous. Inclusive to the Yes. Yes. So then, if if you look at our graduate unemployment rate, we are talking about 56.8 um, percent, which is what very very high. Which means we we have a lot of manpower that have been trained, but but they cannot make their own contributions. You know, to economic development. If you also look at if you also look at the 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 the, the quality of those that are employed, are they are they run peg in, in run holes? You know, are they experts like uh, the, the, the politician said? Are they experts? Of course, the, question, the answer is no. We don't want to be start, we don't want to start mentioning name here. We are aware of um, the, the power sector and all that, where a lawyer is in charge of the power sector, which which, which completely variance with, uh, with 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 development of the power sector. Then 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 you also look at what 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 is the economic program that has been put in place. We are not talking about. Uh, po uh, pocket money of 5,000 naira here. We are, we are talking about what is the concrete program that has been put, uh, that has been put in place to address uh, some of these economic problems. We, we, we are looking at, uh, for example, what is the, the, the power sector? Are the industries getting enough energy to run their, their industries? You know, the answer is what? No. Even this industry, even when they want to get established, are they all these bottlenecks that are there? You know, does it help in industrial development? The answer is no. Now, we have a situation in our hand, like my friend rightly said, you close the border for goods, uh, goods and services not to come in, but meanwhile, you also open the same border for you know, all sorts of characters to come in. You know, so, so we are getting a national priority wrong. Okay. So are we not saying that the, the human beings coming, they have no skill, they have nothing, you know, you know they, they are more important than allowing the economy to grow through trade, uh, you know, interaction among uh, ECOWAS nations and all that. Is, is that the issue? So, so we've, we've, we've gotten our economic, uh, you know, our development completely wrong. So that is why you are not too far from the truth when you said that there's really no economic development program in place. What we have is, is mere uh, party issue, wishing, wishing. Uh, uh, you see, if you want to make people happy, give them 5,000 naira. And when you do that, then uh, you have empowered the people. Or you start going to market to be distributing 10,000, 10, Is that it? All those are not development plans. All those are what I would call uh, campaign a strategy to win people to so it it it, it, it bases up the whole the whole concept of economic development plan. Okay. This is what we are talking All about. Right, so here. Let's yes. Yes. Uh, Fred, yes, what, what are your perspectives here? Okay. <clears throat> Let me say that we cannot overemphasize the need to have round pegs in round holes and square pegs in square holes. We need to use professionals exactly. for <laughs> The, for the challenges we have. Because I'll tell you this, even to design a development plan, you need professionals who will be able to identify what is needed. Uh, if you remember, early in this administration, federal administration, the think tank, the economic think tank, uh, chaired by the vice president, Professor Osibanyo, had four lawyers in it and one economist. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to administer an economy. My constituency. Then we all know about the mismatch 
of all the ministers and the and the professions and their specializations. It's that's a scandal and a shame. We know about all that. That's where you begin to, you know, you start by making corrections in those places. Look, in, in fast growing economies, the people who talk, organizations, private and public, are usually those trained in business or public administration. Those who have something to do with administration. They know how to set agenda. They know how to set development agenda and development plans. Once that is put in place, they begin to design the, plan, the, the strategies and tactics to get to them. You set your goals and all of that. In Nigeria, we seem to, we seem to double in everything. There are areas where we have comparative advantage yes. that we can focus on. Like the professor has told us, the priorities of the nation we have to have experts who will be able to identify it. For everybody, we all have from a, our own different perspective, we we'll think, oh, well, this should be a priority, the other man says, oh, that should be a priority. But you need experts to really say, this should be the priorities based on such and such and such and such. Mm. Those indicators, those uh, indices. And we are being warned internationally, exactly. day after day, that we are in danger of imploding. So what do we do? I must say this. Any economy that is not, that does not understand the meaning of efficiency, which is the allocation of resources to their highest economic value, and any economy that does not plan accordingly and cannot achieve it can never be said to be a success and cannot be in the direction to succeed. Effectiveness, on the other hand, is allocation of resources uh, to their uh, most, most or expedient needs, needs yes. which may not be the highest economic value. So you want to optimize the resources you have, the factors of production. If I'm bringing, I mean, it's common sense. If I take my car to my tailor to fix, because he has seen the mechanics working on cars before, <laughs> you know what the result is. <laughs> it will be a disaster, it will be obviously. A disaster. <laughs> and that is what we are experiencing here. Okay, okay. We should learn to, to stay back and let those who understand particular uh, exigencies, particular uh, challenges, handle those challenges. And then there must be that interface. Okay, let me let me get uh, Paul here. Uh, Paul, is, you've been itching to say something. Yes. Yeah. I, I, it, it, I've, I've said it earlier before. It, it will not be very clear. It, it, it will be. It is not a fact that we don't have a, a developmental plan. Yeah. Uh, we have. I, I agree with you absolutely. I, I talked yeah. about the RGP plan. Which yes. Is there. Yes. What we needed to do uh, as a discussion of panelists to interrogate this government, look at the plus or the minus mm. regarding that the uh, ERGP plan. Yes. Because this yes. Will be, no, no. I think the ERGP plan focused on agriculture and food yeah, safety exactly. between 2017 mm. and 2020 mm. onward. Mm. And in a sense, um, I, I, I'm sure there are some gains in agriculture. I mean, particularly for this year where we had the borders closed. Yeah. Last year. Right? Yes. Because the, the prof just talked about the border closure. Yes. Because we, we have not talked about the plus regarding the border closure. Now, let, let, I, I like to bring into reality. I have in the boy in my house that. Uh, that, go, that sells rice. Now, if you go to the market today, as a result of that border closure, if you go, if you go to the market, you see like seven different, like seven rice or so different brands. Different, you, okay. you see nine or eight, six, six of them is Nigeria rice, different varieties of rice. It's only one you see as from rice, maybe as a result of some, 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 other, some other small. But yes. if you look at this last year, majority of Nigeria as a result of that closure of border, we now eat what we produce. Some of the challenges we are having and the economists have been telling us in previous time is that we don't produce anything, we don't produce anything. This is the first time the government is taking a bold step, uh, taking a bold step as a result of its political will, to close the border so that we can produce what we eat. And today we have that, okay, now look at the last report that just came up. We were formerly the, the largest importers of rice in Africa. 
the last report that came up is that we are the largest producers of rice. No political statement. No, no. just hold on, no. Prof. Let him lie. Let him no. establish no. that. No. You may so, controvert well, that, but in the course of the question, okay. the, yes. the reality and the point of question is that in, in real, uh, uh, realistically, you discover that we have had uh, uh, people feeling the impact of this production of rice. You can see rice farmers get happy because. They are not selling their rice, mm. and Nigeria is producing what they eat. And the expense of all the consumers. Yes, no. exactly. And the expense of all the consumers. We are let's take one at a time. We are going to make it interesting. Uh, uh, they just yes. Singapore, China, Malaysia. Yes. These are some of the things they did. They close their borders so that they can call the local manufacturers. Mm. When you don't close your border, everybody just go there, import and dump things into this country. And what happened to local producers and manufacturers? It kills the economy. Okay. Prof can look to that fact that. If you don't produce, he has called me so I can talk right. now. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> is it only a rice that comes through the border? Yeah. Many other products. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. okay. Yes. <laughs> we have talked about a very one of the largest social investment program. Mm, yeah. We are not looking at that. All right, let's 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 pursue there. Let me pursue okay. Chris. Um, I know in the course of our analysis, we talked about the political will to I mean, to drive. A development plan. And you made an analogy where uh, what government comes in, sets up its own structure for a development plan. By the time that administration winds up, whatever plan that administration had goes with it. And then another person, goes, we just have this vision cycle. Let's, let's look at that political will to set up a development plan, maybe 100 years, maybe 50 years. Any administration that comes in buys, it, buys into it. Why is it so difficult for us to have that? In place in the country. So, well, in one country. of the good things this kind of discussion helps to bring up is the hypocrisy of the nation in Nigeria. <laughs> when you don't have political cohesion in the first place, you don't have a nationalistic drive, you don't have patriotism towards a national vision, these kind of things are what you find. And that's the main reason. Now, our political structure and setup in the first place is that we not take it all. Mm. It is one reason that professionals are excluded. You are not a member of the ruling party, irrespective of the competencies you have displayed, either previously or even now. You are not reckoned mm. and you are not brought in to come and help with national development because there is no national vision. Professional is not there's, 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 sorry? Professional is not doing this economy. <laughs> well, just just allow him to have his time so that we don't we don't distort yeah, because there's no yeah. national vision. Yes, there's no commitment to that national vision. If there is commitment to the national vision, irrespective of whether you are a member of a ruling party or not, and the president finds you competent to come and take up a particular position, yes, you have to bring your ideas and suggestions and training and experience to drive the development plan, you should be brought in. Mm. Are you following me? Yeah. Now, that is why it goes with the administration. So even though you have a particular government, and I'm yet to see anyone, that have come up with that political way to say, I want to create for Nigeria a nationalistic drive, a development plan for Nigeria for the next 30, 40, 50 years. And then I'm going to drive it in the next eight years. And I will convince Nigeria that I'm objective, that I'm not, an, I'm not sectional, that I'm not doing it to favor my, my region. Yeah. Now, we had the NDDC, the Niger Data Development Commission. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we started hearing bombings in the North, Niger, uh, Northeast. And then what was the next, mm -hmm. the next uh, cry? We should set up a, a North uh, Northeast Development, Development Commission. Commission. Then suddenly, we started hearing uh, North Central. No, no. Based on what? Yes. Are you familiar with East Development yes, Commission, yes. South East Development yes. Commission, <laughs> even South West Development But when you say let us restructure so that we go, go, we go regional, yes. go political, yes. for into the sixth zone, we, we, we find people country in it. But we want to set up Development Commission from the same federal government. Why don't we then structuralize the country so that we have six zones, each one allowed to tap the resources within this enclave and develop it? Why we still retain a, a confederal system? you know, in the, in the national. So the point is, we are hypocritical about national interest. We are hypocritical about national cohesion and national integration. So when the government is there, he sees himself and his cronies as the people in power and wants to do everything to, to, to launder his image, yes, and to say, we are the one who did this. And when the next one comes, 
who is of the opposition, he says, oh, no, we must rubbish that and show that we are the one who did it. So we don't have a nationalistic drive. We don't have a development plan for Nigeria. What we have is plans by political parties and that plays out with them. That's the point I've been trying to make. Okay, Prof, what, what does the future hold for a country like Nigeria in the face of these semi-conflicts here and there? Uh, then I also need us, yeah, because you said a while ago, yes, in 2013, 2014, Nigeria became the largest economy, economy in Africa. In Africa. Yes. Yeah. Was there a development plan in place then? Of course. Yes. Uh, Duke, have you forgotten? No, no, I'm asking a question. I, I, don't want to, I don't want to take sides. I'm not supposed to take sides. Oh, okay. So that's what I'm asking you. All right. Yes. Let me reframe it. <laughs> have we forgotten? Yes. Uh, during uh, Jonathan's time, talking more seriously now, there was this economic team that was set up, you know, by uh, the uh, Jonathan administration. And they brought in experts in the name of Ungozi Iwela, who was a World Bank expert, to come and what? Chair that team. You know, and, and, and what was the whole concept? Yes, yes, exactly. Then this, uh, Adewus, this Agri Greek man, the, you know, who is now in charge of ICOWAS. Adewumi. Adewumi. You know, so these are technocrats, experts in the area. Because my friend at the, at, the, at the extreme left just now was saying that you need experts, you know, not necessarily political patronage. Because we're talking about national projects here. Yeah. We're talking about national projects. And when you use expert, you can what, see the result. When Ngozi was in charge, remember within that period, we were having what we call world economic meltdown. And because of the, uh, you know, the, the expert you know, uh, drive of, of Ngozi's team, we, Nigeria never experienced, uh, Nigeria was never affected with world economic drive. It, rather, our debt was forgiven, you know, because of the strategies she put in place. These are what we are talking about, about here. Even, even if, you, if you, my friend, my very good friend here, it appears he loves rice a lot, was saying the rice program, you know, as uh, you know, made rice to be cheaper and all that. If we have to go back, really, what was the price of a bag of rice before in 2015, 2016? And how, the, to what extent were the, farmers? The, the highest. To what extent were farmers no, no, benefiting yeah. from it? I think we need to. Yeah, yeah, before the border. We need to balance the question. You know, we need yeah, to balance the question. You know, what was the cost of yes. a bag of rice at that time? Yes. To what, uh, to what yes. extent did the uh, farmers yes. benefit from that price compared to last year? Yes. 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 Is it, well, there, 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 there was a lot of benefit. Mm. There was a lot of benefit because you are, we are looking at the income vis-a-vis -vis what you can buy with it. That's what we are talking about. Today, I would know I would, the local rice is not 20-something uh, naira. It's not 20-something naira a bag. 20-something thousand naira. Yeah, 20-something thousand naira a bag. But, but the, the, old, the old price of the so-called foreign quote was what? Was, was, was 9,000, 9, 8,000, the highest grade. But you see, what you are looking at, the consumer price index, has the consumer saved money in the process of buying that product? That is what we are also looking at. How much has it eaten into the, the, the debt of the consumer's income? That is what we are looking at. And, and don't forget that we want to measure economic performance. The consumer price index is very important. Okay. Yes, it, it, it's a key because it goes to show how much income the consumer can spend and how much he can also what, save for that priority of, of his needs. Okay. Now, so, uh, just going forward on our conversations today on uh, national development plans and let's search for appropriate strategy, we'll be looking at expectations based on the New Year message of uh, Mr. President, even though there's been a whole lot of reactions surrounding that. But you know that uh, we, we can't take calls on the program today, but you can send a message to the WhatsApp number we're showing you on the screen. The number is 0803-872-6759. The number is 0803-872-6759. That's the WhatsApp number. Send your contributions, your comments, your questions to that number right now, right away. I'll take it again, 0803-872-6759. Please be as brief as possible and do not cast a passion on anyone, whether those in the studio or out of the studio. So, uh, we agree. Let me come to you. Um, in terms of expectation, because from the 
New Year's speech by Mr. President. To, to, to an extent, that's also, that's also a policy statement. Mm -hmm. All right? It may not be a medium-term, a, a short-term, or a long-term development plan, but it's a policy statement. What, 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 are, what are expectations, or what are your expectations in 2020? We're already in here. Outside of uh, the greetings, <laughs> the body of that old speech is supposed to inform Nigerians about the status of the nation's economy. Where we were exactly. last year, the previous uh, period of reckoning, where we are right now, and where he intends to take us in the short run, like he said, in the next one year, and next three years, and then the vision that he needs to be, that he will be quit for the coming administration, which is the long-term program. Those are the things we needed to hear. But did we hear any of those? I said no. I said no. We did not. The only plus I would say we have in this administration right now, nothing to do with the New Year speech, is the fact that the budget has been approved. Mm -hmm. So we have 12, 12 months on which to actually work on this project, uh, take this uh, budget and run with it. And let's see if to be different from what has been happening in previous times. But with the kind of economy we run, <laughs> on a very serious uh, note, our budget is not something that cannot be consumed and co concluded in two months. How much do we budget? If we really put all of that budget to work aggressively, in two months it will be consumed. The truth is this. Uh, we do not have a potent development plan that can take us to the quote-unquote next level. Is it a hopeless uh, situation? Uh, it's not a hopeless situation. We can, no, no. L listen, like I was sharing with somebody just yesterday. I said in 2003, China had more bicycles on its streets than they had cars. Yeah. A whole lot of bicycles. Mm. You hardly find cars. 2003. Then General Motors, the producer of uh, manufacturer of vehicles in the United States, made a decision to penetrate the Chinese market and invested three billion dollars only which is far less than many of our politicians still. Yes. Okay? Three billion dollars on an assembly plant in China. Seeing that the competitors, they, it was red flag for them. Oh, General Motors is about to capture this huge market. 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 Let us go and compete. And everybody started selling his assembly plan. <laughs> no. And today, what do you have in China? More cars also, on the road compared to bicycles. And with that, mm. other forms of development just fall. Of course. Spare we, parts on the road. We can beg any of those major auto manufacturers. We have three billion. You don't have to bring your own. We will give you the three billion. Come <laughs> and establish and see what happens. So you have to have the focus. Okay. Anchor Industries. Uh, I just want to speak quickly to the rice matter that my friend Race. talked about. Mm. With all due respect, your argument on that uh, rice issue, okay, it's it's ordinary because I had the opportunity. I had the opportunity of reading uh, somebody something by another expert, which I agree with totally. Our rice production in Nigeria, I think it uh, comes to about 1.6 per tons. tons per yes. Mm. That's what we are able to do. Mm. Meanwhile, the people we are importing from mm. produce up to 6 and 7 tons per hectare. Mm. So they have comparative advantage. Mm. They are products or are products for which we have comparative advantage. We should be concentrating on those. Import all the rice you want. Yes. 
but produce what you have an advantage on. Mm -hmm. So to buy what you don't have. What you don't have. Let me ask you this. If today we were to ban cars from being imported into Nigeria, which are the industries you think will we, 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 uh, be most happy and will excel? The, to the donkey and the camel rearing industry. <laughs> yeah, because that, we, that's what we will defend. Them. Because that's what we will have to be using. And we will say they are happy. That they are happy. Does it mean that the whole nation is happy? The nation will not be happy because we have been deprived of the more efficient and more affordable products that we need to be able to carry us on. Okay. So those are some of the All right. Uh, our WhatsApp number is still on the screen. Please uh, send your WhatsApp messages to that number. We'll highlight them before we call it a wrap on the program. TMI. Monday. But let me come to Paul Isedon. Yeah, uh, talking about the New Year message, you made reference to that. Yeah. Uh, what what excited you about that message? Unlike um, uh, Fred Igwe. <laughs> yes, I, I took my time to read through the New Year message mm. of uh, Mr. President, President Muhammad Bari. Uh, of recent time, is one of the reassuring and hopeful messages that I've read in recent time because it talks about specifics. Mm. It, it was not uh, it was not gimmicks. It talks about the specific that he's going to do and what he intend to do within the shortest period of time. Even alluding to the fact that uh, he's going to step down, he's going to step down by 2023. The point in question is, if we have taken time to read the New Year message, discover that he talks about so many things, where he came to meet the economy, uh, before he came into power, where the economy is now, what he intend to do, what he intend to do. Look at it, in the last administration, in the last four years of his administration, there is no gain saying that there was challenges in the area of economy. Because it came under the three cardinal program, the security, the corruption, and uh, economy. Uh, Prof alluded to the fact that one of the things that was killing this economy, even in previous administration, even in the times of the Nkozi Okonjo Iwala, was that there were corruption, there were leakages. Mm -hmm. And this man came into power and said he's going to stop corruption. And we are seeing recoveries and we are seeing money. We are seeing people being jailed. We are three governors in jail for now. For now. So the, the thing is that. It was reassuring, it was awful. And now let's look at looking at the challenges he had in that previous in that last four years. There was challenges in the economy. He came up in this in these four years, in last in this second term. He set up an adversary, economic adversary team. We are not made mention of that. We are just talking about other issues that it was not even the it was not caused by this administration. I, I will talk you but I'm not a member of the ruling party for then. The body language. I, I had, <laughs> I have an information, a deep information regarding this uh, uh, administration. So the point in question is, look at the the, the economic adversary team, headed by Professor Salami. It is the first time I am hearing that, uh, 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 the first time I hear economists telling us that the border closure has not been beneficial to us. And I have listened to so many economists, I'm not an economist by profession, but I have listened to so many economists that have talked about, about but that closure or, 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 the or the positive side on the positive side and, could be wrong. And, and, yes, so, and so please yes. no and please you you you, 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 you in the areas of rice production because yes. i had a neighbor that today is praying that his brother should not be open because he's selling rice <laughs> he's a young and he's and he's making and he's making good money, money. okay he's making money, money from me paying more mm. yes no the issue no, is that from me paying more we will get there so okay so, so, yes so, yes he, that, that he, cliche and, says so, it all to climax it up with that yes, yes yes the president talked about the 45 road project 45 project that will be executed this year mm. and he enlisted them and those are those roads can be verified and investigated okay so these are things that are okay, are me are showing. And, talks, and this year, there will be another set of about 200 to 300,000, if not 500, that will be enlisted into a social investment program. Mm. Because sure, cash transfer right there. They may not be sustainable, but mm. they, are, they are palliatives. But the question, where we, are, where we are not interrogating it now, is that we are talking about the national national. Mm. What is the state doing vis-a-vis -vis this development program? Well, we'll, we'll talk about that another day. Certainly not today, because the thrust of this discussion is not about the states at all. So let me get Chris uh, involved. Uh, National New Year message from Mr. President. Uh, how do you factor in some of the things that the government is doing? Uh, what are your expectations, particularly for this year, 2020? Well, I will agree with uh, Fredo Igwe that it's a good thing that the budget cycle has uh, 
be regularized to begin in January and end in December. Kudos to this government. Yes, and uh, <laughs> this year will be the first will be the so first the first year in that would yes in a long in a long time that will have a January December cycle. Okay. I think we would have to wait till the full implementation of the budget mm. before we begin to shout hallelujah. But I just want to lend a voice of support to his, his um, what I think it, is his, his, rice, his uh, motive about rice, rice ministry. <laughs> I, I believe in diversification. I'm not a strict economist. Yes. I believe in diversification and the local homegrown economy. I believe that, that very much. But I also want him to take into consideration what the economists are saying. And it goes back to what we are saying. If you have a structured plan, you'll be able to offset certain policy you know, consequences mm. by other things that you will do okay. that will bring palliatives. Until consumers start to feel exactly. that consuming rice is not boiling hole in their pockets, they are never going to appreciate that policy. In any case, it's a policy. Mm. A policy on rice. I, I support it. I stand by it. Okay. I, I feel we should produce rice locally. Now, as for the President's New Year message, I am not excited by a government telling us that you are going to build 42 roads, I'll be 22, 45, 45 roads. Strategic road project. Yes, strategic road project within the year. The until the roads are built. Exactly. Now, we have had roads being built in this country for eight years, ten years, for through three, four administrations. Hold on. Uh, let me just hold on. Pause. Just hold on. Yeah, are you following me? The second Nigeria Bridge has been built, it's, mm. uh, it's, it's, it has been built yes. for over ten years and all of that. I speak about policy, political will for policy implementation. We should not begin to celebrate when people express intentions. What we should be celebrating is results. The train that we've been celebrating mm. between Kaduna and, uh, and uh, Abuja is now probably the, on, the, 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 the most unsafe means of traveling now. Look at In the past few weeks, it's been under banditry attack. Because when we're building it, we're not thinking that security has implication or that it has security implication. I had told myself why the trains are running that I will never use that. Because by the time these criminals get wise up to know what, what you benefit by derailing the train, then the train is going to be the point of, and it's, and it's, it's, it's going to be early in the day, yes. Are you following me? So what we, we don't have structured planning. No, yes, what I'm saying is that, what I'm, yes, what I'm saying is that if you, if you are building yeah, one, no, hold on, are more than the one that you are building, if you are building a thing, mm. And then before you build the other one, the first one you have built is destroyed. You're actually not making any progress. Economic plans should make progress, and that's why it should be holistic. Okay. So as you are building a railroad, you are thinking of the security implication. Kaduna uh, Abuja Road was the flashpoint of kidnapping mm. when we were using the roads. Why did you think it would not go to the trains? So it is not whether you are making promises of what your administration intends to do. It is how well you have been able to put your plan in place that they become sustainable, yes, and execute them, and they become sustainable projects. Okay. So that from 2021, we can point to it and say, this administration achieved this, yeah. this, this, yeah. and they are sustainable, okay. and they are functioning. Okay. That's what I was the point. All right, let, let me take some messages coming in now from our WhatsApp platform. Uh, this one says, the props comparison of price of rice during last regime and now is wrong because they were imported in large quantities and they were more than uh, is and they were more than that uh, that's why they were cheap between now and next year a bag of rice will be cheaper because more have been produced in the economy when goods are surplus the price will be reduced this is Musa from GRA Musa thank you for your contribution my name is David Ogbeta from a local government area, who would won. This guy is a politician, obviously. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are clamoring for the ban on the importation of rice, but they fail to realize that this same country is still importing petrol. Did you get a drift? I'm sure you got it. Thank you, 
David Ogbeta. So, Prof, yeah. Yes, the, the, New Year the, message, yes, development plan. New Year yes. yes I, you see, when you are talking about closing border, it's a, it's a good thing. When every economic uh, plan is, is in place, when production is in place. Now, in our own case, they, they will make example of China, Malaysia, fine. But these are economies that are productive. Mm. In our own case, we are not productive. You know, we are not, when, we, when I say we are not productive, as at last count, 25 industries, major industries have left the shores of Nigeria because of the poor, uh, unfriendly, productive environment. Pro, you know, you, you, you get it. So, so when we have an economy that is not productive, and at the same time you are closing our border, the implication is clear. It means uh, some Nigerians that are dependent on imported goods are, are going to suffer. You see, we, we should not just look at imported goods from one perspective. Uh, for example, if you are, your national priority, that's why I emphasize national priority at the beginning of this uh, uh, program. Okay. You see, if it's rice, you, are, you, want, you think you have a comparative advantage, advantage on. You know, you, you, you ensure that anything rice does not come does not come into, into your system. Mm. You know, you encourage the local farmers to be producing rice. But uh, other areas, especially if you remember the, 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 the principle of uh, comparative advantage, yeah. that says nations should uh, specialize in those goods and services they in have, which they have the greatest comparative advantage, advantage over others. Yeah. So what is our own greatest comparative advantage as compared to other, other nations, especially when you are looking at, so, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, ECOWAS nations mm -hmm. and all that? Mm -hmm. so we will not be able to identify what is our strength you know, in terms of production as against those, those ones that we don't have the comparative advantage. I think that is where they miss the penalty. Okay. You know, that's where they miss the penalty. Well, as for the New Year uh, <coughs> message, well, I, I don't know. I saw things like road there. I saw things like, uh, well, we're going to ensure that uh, next things time. Things like road, uh, railway, yeah. agriculture, well, if you want and most of all that. Yeah, we don't, we, if you want to talk about railway, let's be, let's be honest. Mm. Before now, the previous administration has had serious con uh, a contract with the Chinese government on this railway thing, you know, and the thing has almost come to a uh, manifestation sure, yeah. before the present government took over. Yeah, but, but that's, it's, 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 that's the core of what we have been talking yes, about, Prof. You know, yes. There should be continuity. Yes, continuity. That started with the previous yes. administration, and Fine. the present administration continued with it. Yes. yes. But, yes, I agree with you. I'm sure if we had this kind of style over yes. the years, yes. We won't be here talking about yeah, the development plans. Yeah, but this plans. idea of saying that we started it from the beginning and we ended it, that's where I have a problem. Okay. So, 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 so the point is, is, the messages are fine, they are sweet, they are, they are you know, beautiful to listen to. Yes. But the, I, the, the, the idea is that, are you actually going to implement this thing? Like my friend said mm -hmm. here, it, it's not a question of, politicians say mm -hmm. all sorts of things. Uh, you know, but at the end of the day, do they really implement it? Especially when those we have in the ministries, they are really mm -hmm. not experts in their own area. So how is it going to be implemented to be very successful? We just pray to God. Okay. Mm. We, we've got this message. Uh, Uyigo, I'll come back to you in a moment, but let me take this message. I think the president's speech is reassuring, although we need more actions than rhetorics or budget speeches. The sub-national government should do more in complementing the federal government. Our citizens are not patriotic. This is Kayode from Isio. Kayode, thanks for your views expressed here on the show. Well, uh, Fred, yes, quickly. Yeah, okay. Um, my friend seems to love the border closure as a good economic policy. Policy, yeah. But I beg to differ. The United States had that kind of a policy back in the 1800s, and they called it the isolationist policy. When they closed their borders to the rest of the world, they wanted to do everything within. Mm. But began, because it began to fail, they changed. They changed it. We should learn from those who have tried yes. and succeeded or failed. When they are, where they have failed. But there are, there are other climbs where this policy of isolation no, no, was practiced and it paid off. Okay. Singapore, for example, Singapore. in China, Singapore, in Japan, Singapore. yeah, no, yes, Singapore, yes. It wasn't, it wasn't, it so tell us, tell us about those countries. Tell us about those. Mm. Mm. It wasn't a closure. Mm. Okay. It was in 
providing a new system, yes. a new paradigm. Mm -hmm. It was a complete paradigm shift. Yes. Embracing technology. Okay. What we need to do is embrace technology. Yes. And let me tell you. That will encourage productivity. Let me tell you this. Uh, yeah. The way America, for example, they have the largest agric economy in the whole world. Yes. They are responsible, although America represents just 4.4%. Of world's population, mm. they are responsible for 46 percent of world agri agricultural output. Mm. So that's huge. Okay. That's about 10 times their population. Yeah. So that means we have a lot of room to grow. Absolutely. The way they handle such problems, which makes me think what we are we are uh, applying is a wrong strategy, is to tax a little bit more that which is coming in yes. and use it to support yes. the ones who are producing until they can raise their quality up. Mm. The reason Nigerians were not buying Nigerian rice mm. was because the quality did not match what yes. was being imported yes. Absolutely. and then it was also cheaper Absolutely. what was the oil imported. So you want to bring your quality up to the international standard yeah. and then bring there, there, must, there must be investment yes. in one so way or the other. Investment in All right, thank you gentlemen for the views expressed. I mean, it's been very, very illuminating in the last uh, couple of minutes with our panelists here. Fred Uyigwe, many thanks for coming. Thank and for Paul Izedonwe, thank you for coming. You Christopher Jekyll, we appreciate you. Thank you, sir. And our prof from Novena University, Professor Tony Dewey, we appreciate you it's for your presence. It's a pleasure. Well, that has been our discussion segment on TMI Monday with your Sincerely. We hope you learned one or two things. We hope that government will uh, match words with action in ensuring that these deliverables are actually felt on the street. Uh, each time we have a development plan and it is truncated uh, with the outgoing administration and then for the new administration to start something new, then there is a big problem in our hands. We need to have more synergy, more collaboration for us to drive Nigeria to where it ought to be. My name is Sonny Jikoko, so thank you again for staying with us on the program team. I will be back in a moment. Don't go away. Appreciation. In line with our tradition, board, management, and staff of independent television and radio take this opportunity provided by this special season to appreciate our esteemed viewers and valid clients, as well as wish them joy, peace, and prosperity. For years, your patronage has been solid and your support unflinching. Today, we can confidently look back assured your partnership will always make the difference. As one year winds up and a new one begins, we look forward to the future with a profound sense of optimism on account of the formidable collaboration we have formed over time. Our earnest prayer is for this season with all its blessings to open up a whole new vista for you all year round. Once again, thank you and top of the season to you. Signed, Management Independent Television and Radio. Okay, just before we call it a wrap on the show, uh, we just highlight some of the messages that came uh, while we were on the last break. Uh, good morning, sir. The problem is that the masses are not pre-informed about the action of the president. He just wakes up and plays a ban on goods, thereby making uh, them not to be prepared for that. This automatically brings hardships to the masses, and again, you should cut across board by picking technocrats. It needs a professional advisor, not just uh, an APC member. Even uh, most of the people there now are inexperienced. These are your thoughts, your opinion. You didn't put your name. Uh, you say, Okpara is my name. I want to say our leaders are not helping the masses at all. Please, there is nothing like Vision 2020. And this APC regime has never mentioned it in their change programs. Our propagandas, they have not done anything for Nigerians. See your panelists saying his brother is happy. A bag of rice is 30,000 naira to the detriment of the masses. This guy should go and sleep with, with the Paris government, APC. Uh, well, let's, let's be civil in our language and what we say. Good morning, Sonny. Good morning. 
Why must we Nigerians wait until the closure of borders before patronizing our local food? Uh, that's talking about uh, patriotism, all right? And then um, my name is uh, Genesis from Textile Mill Road. Uh, I think if we are talking about change, it has to start from the president, president's cabinet and other officials and also some policies before we talk uh, before us. Anyway, I just can't get the last part of uh, what you're saying, but I'm sure you made some sense all the way. But I want to say big thanks to everyone that made the show a huge success. Mike Ohiro behind the cameras. Thank you for doing a humorous job. Our presentation director has been Sonny Ugo Brown, Tony Etting with uh, social media content administrator. We appreciate all of you. And most importantly, you at home watching and also taking time out to spend your credit to contribute to this conversation. We really appreciate you. My name is Sonny Duke Okoson. Thank you for staying with us once again. Happy New Year. Bye for now.